Hi, Joe Bonnier from FastPitchPower.com and Empower Athletic Development. One question I receive as much as any other, especially on the Fast Pitch Power site, is what type of training or what type of strength training is appropriate for my son or daughter who's 9, 10, or 11 years old? Before going any further, I think it's totally appropriate that kids of that age are participating in a fitness program. However, there are some special considerations that you want to be aware of uh, and take into account when designing that fitness experience or that exercise program for kids of that age. I'm going to be using or referring to principles in, uh, in today's video that I, I'm literally borrowing from another presentation I've already shared on the Fast Pitch Power site, and that's from Greg Rose of the Titleist Performance Institute. Okay, so I'd like to cite his influence on this presentation and on these principles. Greg and his team at Titleist, which is a golf performance institute, have done a lot of research on long-term athletic development and put together quite a comprehensive youth fitness program. So he's a fantastic uh, resource to utilize. More than anything else, before you worry about exercises and um, what's safe or appropriate when designing a fitness program or an exercise program for youth athletes, m more important than anything is to make sure that experience and keep that experience enjoyable and fun for the athlete. Your athlete's son, daughter has to look forward to the workouts, and I hesitate to even call them workouts because the kids shouldn't even uh, recognize it as such. Okay, things that we used to play, we used to do at recess, on, or things you can do on a playground, are, are more of what you should be incorporating in youth fitness programs than something you'd see um, in a gym. Now, if you follow my videos, and you can, you can hopefully you can see the resemblance of the types of exercise I'm using in the more structural, formal environment with older athletes, and uh, how they just represent progressions of the fun fundamental movements that kids learn at an early age on the playground, so to speak. So things like stepping, uh, lunging, jumping, squatting, uh, you know, different agility movements, backpedaling, running, uh, uh, movements on the ground, you know, in gym class or, you know, playing, uh, playing or wrestling with their friends, rolling, climbing, crawling, you know, adventures in the backyard type movements eventually get progressed once the kids are older uh, to more formalized structured movements with, with resistance. Okay, and those form the, the basics, the, the, uh, the basic movement mathematics for uh, complex movements such as athletics and sports. So we're really just returning to the beginning of the fun functional movement continuum in, in utilizing movements uh, that athletes should be exposed to, or young kids, every, every human, should be exposed to at a young age. These are what you want to utilize in youth fitness programs. As athletes get older, the workouts become more formalized. Okay? Important consideration here is that with youth, youth fitness, we want to deformalize the experience, if that's even a word. Okay? We want to make it more about exploration the younger the athlete is. The older they are, okay, 13, 14, they're ready for high school athletics. Uh, they're probably not only physically now mature, they're also uh, psychologically mature enough to understand uh, the purpose and benefits of a formalized workout program. But as they get, as the, uh, the younger the athletes are, it needs to, be, uh, needs to appear to them more as random play and fun, something they look forward to. Okay. Second principle here is as often as possible is to include their friends, obviously. You know, if you're a coach, uh, you don't have to worry about this. You should be designing your workouts or your exercise experience for your athletes as a team. Okay? Uh, if your parent, okay, and you're only have, you have, you know, you're trying to create a program for your daughter who's who's 10 years old, okay, I suggest that you participate alongside of her. Now, if she doesn't want to work out with dad, she doesn't want to work out with mom. Um, you need to find a way again to the most to keep uh, to add. Uh, to honor, the most important principle here is that you got to keep it fun. Okay, so it's going to take some participation. You might not have to do the workouts, but you might have to design some exercises that take some teamwork, especially when it comes to things like, you know, maybe throwing a medicine ball back and forth, right? Designing her obstacle course, things like that. Okay. Um, and then uh, 15 minutes. Greg talks about a rule, a uh, five-minute rule. Are right, your workouts for athletes, you know, younger than 12 years old or, you know, uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, you got about 15 minutes. All right? You got about 15 minutes of attention span. All right? This might be three different stations of five minutes, three components of five minutes. Okay, maybe a warm up, general warm up, movement based, um, movement exploration based warm up. Um, 
skipping, butt kicks, crawling, rolling, then you get three, four minute stations. Uh, and I'll show you what you can include in those types of stations. Or you can set it up as um, any way you want, as long as you kind of, you know, you, you, you honor in these principles. This being most important, you know, if you're training with a team, if you're designing a team workout, you don't have to worry about this. All right, friends will already be there. But most importantly, start with a, a, a 15, 15 minutes of fun at the end of your practice. Okay, now let's get to the things that people normally want to know more about. All right, you know, what types of exercises and any equipment that's appropriate and safe for athletes of this age. Um, actually, before we move on to the equipment, I'm just going to kind of reiterate some things here. Uh, it, to, to go along with the, this idea of deformalizing or um, you know, having a more unstructured, random fitness experience, okay, you're going to use more games instead of sets and reps, maybe games, challenges. Okay, you got to use funny names. Right? Don't call things rear foot elevated split squat. Squat, push up, come up with some funky names that you know the girl make the girls laugh, make the kids laugh. Right? Again, do anything you can to make this enjoyable. Colors, color, colorful obstacles. The younger they are, the more they're going to look forward to that stuff. Okay. Um, competition without punishment. This is important. Uh, you. This just goes with you know honoring the most important principle here. You never want to punish you know, a 9, 10, 11 year old, really anybody who performs poorly during a workout by punishing them with more, you know, uh, with more exercise. Okay? No punishment, no fear, absolutely no fear. It's really important um, that the athletes aren't, don't fear you know, the 15 minute workout at the end of practice or whatever you have put together. Okay? No anxiety, okay? Yet they have to absolutely look forward to this, and especially at 9, 10, 11 years old with females, you're going to have girls of all different sizes, all different capacities, growing really fast, you have you know girls who haven't grown, um, you're going to have girls who excel in different areas at that point. Some are more agile, some are more flexible, some are stronger. So I guess I suggest that you make sure you include a variety of different types of, of exercises. You don't just put together a conditioning circuit, because they're going to be girls, if they're larger, are going to have a harder time because they just have a larger body to move around for the 15 minutes. So don't just make it about, especially don't make it about high intensity cardio or fitness or anything that resembles an adult workout. Um, you're going to have to have some element of, of cardio, uh, something that gets them moving and sweating and, and breathing a little heavy. You know, but you need to have your balance test, something, you know, something that tests maybe their strength. Uh, I really don't know. I work with high school athletes. All right? I don't do this on a daily basis, so I don't have the examples off the top of my head. But I hope that you can kind of see, based on the equipment you have available to you and the facility you have available to you, what kind of things you can do um, to not only help everybody improve, but reveal to each and every one of your uh, team members what they might be good at. Okay? So don't just make it about you know, improving their weaknesses. You have to expose their strengths. That's part of making them feel good. All right, common sense stuff, I think. All right, equipment. Really, you only have a couple things here: body weight, bands, balls, dumbbells, barbells. I really don't see any place for them at this age. Okay, uh, safe, you know, safe and fun. Um, with body weight, we can, you can do anything with body weight. You can squat. You can pick up stuff. All right. Uh, squatting down to pick, pick something up, stepping up onto a bench or a bucket, okay? Different types of lunges, okay? you got to rename all these. Um, jumping, hopping, bounding, which might be something you might see in something like a hopscotch uh, or an obstacle course. Crawling, climbing, rolling, okay? movement, exploration. No sit-ups, no push-ups, no like leg, partner leg lifts, nothing you would see in an adult workout, okay? Um, these are just movements. These aren't exercises. These are movements. Uh, with bands, you're going to pull on them. Okay? You can do different exercises. Uh, twists, we'll talk about the import, like how all this fits in our, in, um, into kind of our critical exercise or movement categories that you at least want to honor so the, so the exercise experience is balanced. Uh, like I said, you want to balance it between cardio, balance, strength, and agility. Uh, within that, there are some movements that you, just, you, you want to touch on each each workout or each um, during each program. Move over here to the board. Hopefully, there's no glare. 
Okay, uh, in a structured, formalized workout, pretty much every day, for a softball athlete, for any athlete, we're going to do some type of upper body pushing. It's not a chest exercise, it's a pushing exercise. We're going to do some type of upper body pulling, like a row or a pull-up. So exercises that uh, fulfill these categories, obviously push-ups and pressing and med ball throws, uh, TRX rows, pull-ups, dumbbell rows. Those fulfill those movement categories. Uh, a lower body exercise. So in a formalized environment, uh, formal environment, we have squats and, and dumbbell step-ups and rear foot elevated split squats and sled pushes. And in your environment, you could have you could have some form of squat, some form of step-up, some form of lunge, you know, a single leg balance exercise, something. Then we have a, I'll just call it twisting, a twisting movement. Okay, we work on the upper body moving one way, we work on the upper body moving another way, uh, work on a lower body exercise, you know, all three of these connect the upper, the upper half and the lower half. Twisting movements connect the right side and the left side of the body and the right bottom corner to the left upper corner and the left bottom corner to the right upper corner. It's very important that you have some type of rotary movement, not just for sports specificity. All right, because we need connections between different halves and different corners of the body for optimal motor development and athletic development. Um, speed and agility. My 10-year-old needs to get faster. I can't believe how often I hear this. Okay? Don't worry about giving her speed and agility drills. Give her movement drills. Have her moving in all different directions. Um, so your speed and agility category, which I don't want you to really call it, all right, is going to involve things like basic old-fashioned calisthenic exercises, butt kicks, high knees, skips, shuffles, karaoke's, back pedals. Um, you can use hurdles, cones, hopscotch variations, different obstacle courses, uh, anything you want, anything you think that's going to make it fun. Don't bark at them, okay? If you're a young assistant coach and you come out of college and you're in charge of you know, a 10U team or a 12U team, do not train them using any Thing that is similar to what you just endured in college. And I, I don't say that jokingly. I say that because I've, in the limited experience I have with softball players, I see that a lot. Okay? Uh, young coaches, who typically are the ones on the staff that have the most fitness experience because they're in the gym, they just came out of college, they have some college softball level strength and conditioning experience. Okay, they're in charge of putting together a fitness program, and all of a sudden they're, you know, they're doing high intensity circuits, uh, pushing sleds, doing kettlebell swings with young athletes. Uh, not appropriate. I'm not saying sled's not appropriate because that's generally a safe exercise. Um, but that can really gash your young athletes out and make this zero fun. So be cautious. I don't want to rule out things. I don't like being. I don't be, like being an absolutist. I don't like to rule out things. Again, if it's fun and you can show me fun, then and you can kind of honor the different movement, both movements and capacities, uh, physical capacities that are that I've kind of touched on here. Uh, you're probably on the right path, and it's a 15-minute workout. We're going in the right direction. That's all I'm going to say today because I want to keep this video short. In the future, I might give you exercise examples just to kind of touch, um, touch uh, give you literally physical examples of, of things that are appropriate. But I think if you follow the videos and you see what I've already uh, provided, you go back and look at Greg Rose's presentation. Please honor uh, his utility and his experience. Okay, don't just rely on me, again, because I work primarily high school athletes, and I'm going to be honest about that. Uh, this is where you want to turn.